Maybe you've been told that you slide in your golf swing and so this has made you afraid of even moving from side to side to prevent that dreaded sway because we perceive this slide to be something that is going to create havoc with the swing, havoc with the strike, havoc with the low point, creating these potential flip roll releases and things like this. Well, it might just be that we've misinterpreted what sway or slide is and how this actually applies to what we perceive as impact or that movement through impact. So what we're going to look at is what actually is sway or slide and how does this influence how we strike the ball? Because ultimately, we're trying to strike the ball and the turf. So we need the low point of the golf swing to be in front of the ball, but also below the ground. So ultimately the club is traveling down towards the low point, collecting the ball on its way, taking the turf as it travels towards the low point, and then the bounce on the club guides it back out and the club swings through to the finish. So how do we recognize that low point? Are we actually moving our body in a way where we feel we're shifting our weight to get a downward strike, but completely unintentionally creating a movement which is shifting our low point back, forcing us to use this dreaded flip roll release, which is creating all kinds of havoc with our shot pattern. This creates thin shots, heavy shots, potential fades, potential draws. If you want to know more about that, there is another tutorial. So if you click on the link above, that'll take you to a tutorial that's gonna go a bit more in depth. But in this video, we're looking predominantly at swaying the goal swing. And what this really is, is lateral flexion of the upper body. It's side bend, but it's side bend with weight transfer, moving the body, moving the mass. So we're literally moving from leg to leg, but there's a slight caveat to this because we're not just moving and rotating, we're actually side bending. As we load onto the left side, we're actually side bending to the left. Now this may be perceived to be an unrecognizable position or move in the golf swing. But if we suddenly rotate the body to the right, and now I put my arms in place with the club, suddenly this looks like quite a desirable place to be to swing down. Because where I am now is actually in front of the golf ball. I'm actually moving past the golf ball, which enables me to shift the low point forward. Additionally, the left shoulder's gone down due to the side bend, so now we've actually got a low point that's well beneath the ground, which has given us the opportunity to use the ground for that vertical force to spring up, that releases the club, and that gets the ball turf contact because the low point is in front of the ball and it's below the ground. But we're springing up to achieve this release, and that's because we've gone past impact and we've gone down. And this provides the opportunity now to go up and get that downward attack. And this might be perceived to be a full body sway, but it's not really because we're rotating to and we're side bending. So actually the body is utilizing its lateral, its rotational and its vertical components to maintain dynamic balance and move through space in a way that creates maximum leverage. The body's actually working as a slingshot. We've got a slingshot using the arms so we've got this lever system creating the slingshot, but we've also got this upper body, what might be perceived as tilt or sway, it's actually just lateral flexion. So I don't need my pelvis. Can you see my pelvis isn't really moving? I'm using lateral flexion of my thoracic. This is upper body lateral flexion. And it's this side bend that's gonna essentially influence the direction of the club. So this is gonna help bring the club down and through the ground and back up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna harmonize this with our weight shift. And it's that weight transfer that's really important. Moving from leg to leg. If I was to sway as I do this, I'd be compromising my balance, and be unable to swing a club. But if I do this, now I can swing a club. So I'm moving my mass in a functional way, maintaining dynamic balance. And if I wanna get a strike, we're gonna use side bend. So if I use this shifting action and then side bend, suddenly we're in a very desirable place. Because if I put my right foot back, my trail foot, suddenly I've got a low point that's way ahead of the ball. And how have I got there? Well, I've shifted my body weight and used my lateral flexion. And this certainly doesn't look like the traditional 
sway where the body's tilting back which brings the low point back here and now makes it very difficult to get contact with that ball ensuring that strike is really important so we need to move past the ball this is quite an unusual feeling if you've never done it before letting the shoulders tilt as you shift and it's this side bend with the upper body that's going to create that natural angle with the club to the ball and that's going to allow you to freewheel the release at the right point in the golf swing through impact not towards impact we're not swinging to impact we're moving past impact to use the ground to move back and let the club swing through impact now that's swinging down and through impact great little exercise allowing yourself to step from side to side that's getting you used to using the whole body but then on one leg just get a sense of what it's like just to side bend now you can use the trail foot here use the other foot as support and just get a feel for this side bend and then jump to the right and notice what that feels like what we're doing is we're training the body we're training the nervous system to accept these movements to accept this movement in space and these ranges that we're exploring so that when we swing a club the body allows us to access these functional movements which lie well within these ranges so it's not compromising the body's stability balance it's going to let you commit that's the most important thing we have to feel safe and secure swinging that's the first thing that's going to allow us to mentally commit because physically the body has to respond in a way we recognize and that's all down to how we train the body so these exercises may not look like a typical golf swing but they are very important components of a functional swing just a natural innate swinging action where we are moving our center of mass but we're also moving all the other segments too in a very dynamic but stable way a way that the body recognizes for example walking it's a sequence but the body is organizing itself in a way that is stable yet functional for the task we're moving it's dynamic we're doing the same thing in golf we're just utilizing bigger ranges and we're using extra planes of motion in a more extreme way so we've got to explore that we've got to let the body recognize it so moving from side to side and exploring this lateral flexion this is not using the shoulders this is just rotating the rib cage this is going to be very important in the transition i.e the change of direction of your golf swing because the body is going to seriously utilize these ranges to maximize that effortless output with the swing and achieve that objective of that ball turf contact so side to side you can always use the other foot just for stability but don't put any weight on that foot no pressure on those toes just exploring that range so this for example might be delivery here with a side bend change of direction swinging down and notice how far the low point is to the left when I bring my right foot back it's over here so it stands to reason that that weight shift and that side bend is going to help shift that low point and get that ball turf contact so let's see how it feels in a swing good practice swing just feeling that weight shift from side to side utilizing the whole body and letting the side bend do the business and recognizing it's not just side bend for the down swing it's also back swing letting the body side bend to swing the club back this might look an unusual move but when we rotate the body we're in what we perceive to be a fairly recognizable backswing position so when you're doing this exercise if you find it difficult you've probably been swaying in your golf swing you probably recognize a weight shift as a big shift with the pelvis that's just displacing the pelvis in space and then the rest of the body reacts by tilting as opposed to shifting and side bending this is quite different this is much more functional much more stable and we can move at speed we can control this action we can accelerate and decelerate very quickly and then we can side bend in a much more balanced way which creates these kind of recognizable and desirable traits in a golf swing not by just thinking about shifting weight which is happening but creating issues because the rest of the body reacts in a way that's going to compromise now the release of the club so just letting the body shift let your upper body shift with your lower body one's not moving without the other they're moving together and then we're using the side bend to create 
that natural arc. So let's see how it works. Go on. Oh. So I managed to pull that one off there. <laughs> We're on the seventh par five at Bow Tree. It's about a 220 yard shot into the green over the trees. And I don't know how I've done it, but I've managed to use my hybrid and it looks pretty close to be honest. Over the trees, bit of draw. And that felt a good strike. That felt very stable, but it felt timed. The release felt smooth and fluid. I wasn't holding back. I was letting it go and I was fully committed. So try the exercises, explore them, even use a mirror if you like, just to get a another perception of how you're actually moving. Allow the upper body to move outside the lower body. So if I was to drop a plumb line from my shoulder, it's outside the base of support. This isn't gonna happen in a golf swing because you're gonna be rotated. But what you've just experienced is the amount of lateral flexion that you're gonna be using. Often we stay within the realms of our base of support and we don't allow ourselves to shift into the ranges that we need particularly with the upper body. Lower body, no problem. We tend to move in all directions with this part of the body in an effort to create force. But the problem is it influences this part of the body and that influences how we release the club. So recognizing the body as a whole, moving as a whole, but then allowing the body to move as a segment because all these planes of motion will be explored through each segment. And that's what creates the chain. And that's what allows the chain to fire because this stable movement of the body allows this segmental separation to take place, preventing that sway of the body, which enables us to sequence and transfer that speed through to the golf club, giving us that effortless feel and flow to the swing. And that's how you stop sliding in your golf swing.